Hey guys, welcome back. I am Jason Salyer and this is Gregory Rumpel. How are you? <laughs> What's up guys? Um, we're in the middle of a paddleboard adventure a few days out on the water in the Everglades National Park and I wanted to discuss a few of our safety slash signaling um, options that we have brought along with us that are going to help keep us safe out here. We want to make sure that we're coming out here. We're pretty isolated. There's some boats that go by boat traffic every now and then, but pretty much we're on our own so we're going to be taking care of ourselves if, if something should go wrong and we just want to be as prepared as possible. Um, with that said, we have several methods of signaling that Gregory can show you right here. So this is just one of those very basic Orion uh, emergency marine kits. Uh, what they have in them are these 12 gauge flares. I'm sure all you guys from uh, Survival Dispatch know what a 12 gauge is but this is very simple it's just a plastic non-corrosive uh, gun effectively and you've got six shells that you drop in pull it back you have to push the button to cock it and then you send it up generally at a, a about a 45 degree from where you are and off it goes I think it has a height of about 500 feet uh, for about three or four seconds I think and so the goal here is to make sure you're not just firing it up because you're feel like you're in trouble but you have to have something that can sight it so you're looking for an airplane a boat somewhere off in the distance to gain attention if that doesn't work you do also in the kit have a little signal mirror uh the good news is it comes with instructions how to sight it in which are complicated which are complicated <laughs> but uh there's various <laughs> methods i won't even go into it now but that's another method to signal generally aircraft or boats that you can see if you can't see it you can't signal it basically and then a whistle out here I don't know what good the whistle will do it's part of the kit maybe it's just to keep yourself company I don't know it's uh, just a little yeah there you go whistle there you go I could see for maybe perhaps if you've got like a fog yeah may a uh, low visibility or you're on a little little island like this one and you're behind all of the mangroves and you hear a boat chugging along around the side of it and they can't see yeah. you hear you blow the whistle maybe I guess it's better to have it than not. So, um, I think the most important one is probably your little SOS. Yeah, so we can device. switch off there. So, so we're thinking always thinking about the most likely scenarios that will get you in trouble, right? Most likely scenario is that um, I'm going to be stranded on one of these little keys uh, because of inclement weather, like super high winds, something like that, like we had last night. And that's going to force us to kind of hunker down in a place until the weather clears up. Um, if that should be a prolonged incident where, let's say we didn't check the weather report and there was a big storm coming through and the weather was just lasting and lasting, we ran out of fresh water. There is not a drop of fresh water out here to be had. If that was the case, then that's where something like this would come in handy or one of, if one of us got injured somehow, some way. Um, something like this, this Garmin InReach Mini, I could hit this SOS button on the side and then it will ping its way around the universe off satellites various various places and eventually help will come my way. Um, this is a paid subscription type deal, um, but in my mind it's the simplest and easiest way to secure your safety when you're in a remote spot. It just kind of just kind of makes sense. Plus you can send text messages yeah, through the satellite. That, that is another super, super handy thing. Um, you notice I've got this attached to my person. If I'm on the water at all, it's I've got my life jacket here and I've got this attached to me, so this will stay with me. Um, uh, you can send text messages through your phone, so you don't need cell phone coverage, which we have, we have a tiny bit of coverage out here, enough to send a text message, but that's pretty much it. And it's a little bit spotty. Um, and who knows if that's going to continue on as we go. But using this, using the satellite connection, I can send a text message through my phone. And that's pretty handy um, and pretty convenient, which I've actually used before. And it, it definitely works um, when I was stuck in the snow somewhere. So um, let's see, what else do we need to discuss? Oh, the life jacket itself. This is probably number one. Um, fortunately, out here, the water is so shallow you're probably not going to drown. You could stand up in most of the places out here. You could touch the bottom, at least you'd be tiptoeing in some places, but for the most part, it's pretty shallow. And a lot of this out here, like if you show right out here, almost everything you see out here going towards that next key, that next island, you could walk on that. That's very shallow. There was a bird standing. Well, it's silty, it's muddy. silty yeah. bottom. Yeah, you're not gonna drown, but traversing it, traveling across it is is not very, 
productive either. So, um, but I've got this life jacket. It's a manual in-flight one. It's out of the way. You don't even notice it's there. It's super light. But if I should fall in the water, be hurt, whatever it is, and I can't swim very well, um, I can yank on this cord and we've got we've got uh, an inflated jacket, which I hopefully I might demo on our way out on our last day. Crack this baby off. But um, let's see. I've also got a signaling mirror in my little pack. This pack is the one that's going to stay stay on my person. This is staying with me um, when I'm on the board because it's got what I view as kind of the essential stuff that I just don't want to be without if I was to get separated off the board. Um, if you're out here by yourself, you definitely want to have that board leashed to you, attached to your person, so if you fall off, the wind wouldn't carry it off. But the two of us out here, and weather's not too bad, wind's not crazy, I, we haven't been leashed up. Um, but if I was to get separated from the board, I would at least have some of the stuff that would help keep me a little bit more comfortable until help arrives. Um, so in this little fanny pack that I keep on, along with my life jacket and the GPS, I, I don't keep any of the stuff in my pockets because if you've ever been in the water, especially in the ocean when there's currents and, and waves and whatnot, anything in your pocket is not going to be in your pocket when you're finished. Um, unless it's lanyarded to your belt loops or something like that, but even then I don't trust it. So I keep it in here and this is buckled around my waist. I've got a compass, simple compass. I've got a lighter in a waterproof case. This is an Exotech waterproof lighter case and I'm not sold on them yet. The cap keeps kind of want to push off on me. So I'm not 100% sold on that. And I've got my multi-tool here, my Leatherman Wave that always comes along with me on every adventure. And then in the main compartment here, I've got the map of the area, the chart, excuse me, Gregory, the chart. Chart. Gregory gets mad when I call it a map. It is a chart. Um, I've got an SOL bivy bag that is bright orange on the outside that I could use for signaling as well, flapping in the wind, something like that, just to signal. And a sail. Yeah, could, could use this for a sail. Um, that would work. But if I had to spend a, this, this is like the only island out here where you can actually, um, you can actually kind of step on, walk on. There's a clearing and there's land that you can step onto. Almost um, every single one of the keys out here is just mangrove covered. Uh, you, there's no, what, there's no walking across it. There's no sleeping laying on top of it. If you had to spend the night out here somewhere on one of these keys because of really bad weather, you'd get on the leeward side tie off to one of the mangroves and just try to stay out of the wind and maybe get inside this and sleep on top of your board that would be that's the reason why i carry that um water i'm gonna have this full when i get in the water today um i just think that it's important to have a metal container that i could well not that i can find any fresh water to boil out here but something i could cook in um and i just want that quart of water on me at all times um, I keep a tourniquet in here because if you need one, you need one. If we should slip and cut ourselves with a knife or something, if we're using it out on the, on the water and the waves, that could definitely happen. Uh, hopefully not, but I wanted to be ready for that. And then I've also got a clear trash bag. So this could also be used as, this could be used for all kinds of stuff, but um, shelter is, is just one of them. Um, and then in the back, just for fun, I threw in a, uh, a frog gig. You never know. You want to spear something um a little bit of duct tape primarily the reason i brought this is for board repair if i should smash my board on a um on a rock or something and i need to temporarily patch it up so it doesn't take on water i've got some gorilla tape there my small signal mirror and then just a little sewing kit i call this a sewing kit it's really just some bank line with a big needle um, and i can separate the three fibers of the bank line out and use that to stitch up my pants or my bag or, or whatever it works pretty good so your, that's pretty your much your knee it. after the hatchet yeah, incident that's right that's right stitch your body up if if you should need to but that's pretty much it that's the stuff the safety oh the, the, we got a first aid equipment i forgot about that we've got a pretty extensive first aid kit here this has pretty much everything that you would need for the short term until you could get uh get some extra help but it's it's pretty all-encompassing um, and then we've also got our cell phones, which, like I said before, have very, very spotty service. You're not going to make any phone calls out here, but you might be able to get a text through. We can also use the GPS apps, the Gaia GPS. Um, that's, an, that's an easy one to back up to our map and compass. And then I've got a radio. This is just an inexpensive Baofeng radio in a dry bag. I mean, I understand that having a... Um, 
marine waterproof radio a really high grade one would be ideal but i don't have one of those so this is what i have and we brought it along just in case um, all other means of communications are down um that's pretty much it did we miss anything no i think that's got it i mean it's uh, all pretty compact and it's with us at all times and obviously there's two of us so that's probably yeah. the best safety device you safety have is, yeah. is somebody that you're traveling with yeah i'm not saying i wouldn't do this by myself but it's it's definitely ill-advised to come do something like this by yourself just because there's so much that could go go awry um and if you're with a buddy this most of those things are not that big a deal if you're by yourself those some of those things could be a major big deal um but um yeah just uh, proper clothing is is probably number one source of our shelter out here not not probably it is the number one source of shelter the sun is brutal very really intense putting sunblock on any exposed areas um covering my face up wear a, a, a brim full brimmed hat i'm wearing pants um just to keep the sun and gloves to keep the sun from just scalding us all right guys well thanks so much for watching make sure you hit that thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you on the next one